AQA, A-level physics, astrophysics. This is uh, the 13th video on astrophysics uh, and the last one. And it's about the detection of exoplanets. And this is what the syllabus says. If you want to have a read of that, let's dive in. So what is an exoplanet? An exoplanet is a planet that orbits a star other than the sun. So it's not in our solar system, it's in another solar system. Uh, now, they are almost impossible to observe directly. Now, why? Because these stars are very, very, very far away. The, the next nearest star to us is about five light years away. It's incredibly far away. And all stars, even very, very big stars, appear to us with our most powerful telescopes as just a tiny little speck of light. So the chances of actually seeing visibly, like photographing a planet going around there is, is very, very slim. These objects are ridiculously far away uh, and stars emit light. Uh, planets don't. They will reflect a little bit of light, so almost impossible to observe directly. So there are a couple of indirect methods that you need to know. Uh, there's the variation in the Doppler shift uh, and there's the transit method, and I'll talk a little bit about each of them. So first of all, now there is a, here's a planet orbiting a star. Now, strictly speaking, the, the star is actually also orbiting the planet, uh, as in they, they both orbit their combined center of mass. So the star is gravitationally influenced by the planet. So as the planet goes round the star, uh, the star wobbles. Yes, uh, they both orbit their combined center of mass and this produces this stellar wobble. Now, you can actually measure that wobble. It's called astrometry, but that's not one of the methods that we need to know. The one that we need to know is the fact that as the star wobbles, there will be a variation in its redshift. As in, as it's moving away from us, the redshift will be a little bit bigger. As it's moving towards us, it'll be a little bit smaller. And this is called the Doppler shift method or the radial velocity method. So as the star wobbles because of the exoplanet, there is a variation in, in its redshift. The second method that we need to know is the transit method. Now, a transit is when an object passes in front of another object. Uh, for example, if you want to look up uh, a transit of Venus, there's some very, very nice videos of that. So what's passing in front of what? Well, the exoplanet is passing in front of the star. This will obviously depend on what angle we're observing it at. But as the planet passes, passes in front of the star, the amount of light that we get from the star, there's a little dip in it. OK, and that dip, the time between the dips will tell us the orbital period of the planet uh, and we'll get some information about the size of the exoplanet by the size of the dip. So this is called the transit method. And looking here, we see a light curve. Remember the light curve for a supernova you needed to know? Well, this is a light curve for uh, an exoplanet orbiting a star. That's about all you need to know about exoplanets. I will mention there are a few um, space telescopes up there doing a great job. Uh, there's one called Gaia, uh, and its job is to actually map the Milky Way. Its goal is to map a billion stars in the Milky Way. Uh, there's one that was sent up a while ago. It's not actually working anymore, but it's done a great job called Kepler. And its job was to look for exoplanets. Um, so far, I mean, this is from 12th of October 2023, which for me now is like a couple of weeks ago, uh, 5,500 exoplanets have been discovered in 4,100 planetary systems. 
So that means that there are a, there's a few exoplanets like in the same system have been discovered. And some of these are in what we call habitable zones, as in habitable, as in like theoretically, uh, humans life could exist. Yeah, you could have liquid water. OK, so the temperature would be about the same as the temperature of the Earth. Maybe we could go and live there. Maybe life has already evolved on it. Um, lastly, this photo top right uh, is actually James Webb Telescope. You should have heard of that. Uh, and it has managed to actually um, take a photo of an exoplanet. So direct observation of an exoplanet by the James Webb Telescope. So it's not impossible. Very, very difficult, but not impossible.